Oh. A must-she series. She ho, she ho. Premiering Thursday, August 18th. New Marvel Hero. Love that. All new night. Let's do this. She Hulk, Attorney at Law. Original series streaming Thursday, August 18th. Lawyer Show. Only on Disney Plus. Welcome back, everyone. This will be my new She-Hulk trailer video. There's a whole bunch of new footage, obviously teasing the Abomination plot. There's a whole bunch of Daredevil stuff going on, so we'll break it all down. If you're brand new to the channel, I'll be doing videos for all the episodes, so be sure to subscribe to get everything. I'll do a special Marvel giveaway in all my She-Hulk videos, too, because they'll be starting really soon. The other big reminder in this trailer, to make another Smart Hulk reference, Marvel has chosen the smart way, the way of peace, and move She-Hulk and Andor episodes so that they're not on the same day. Star Wars and or episodes will be on Wednesdays and She-Hulk episodes will be on Thursdays. So that's the order that my videos will post in when they start overlapping. But they make a lot of jokes about her balancing her two different lives now after she gets her powers. Like she wants to continue doing all the normal things that she does when she was Jennifer Walters, like her dating life. Like she's on this fast track, she's this well-respected lawyer, but then she gets dosed with the Hulk's blood and gets the powers of the Hulk, becomes She-Hulk and wants to continue living that life. That's why you have all those scenes with the Hulk trying to train her, saying, no, 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 you have all these powers now, you have a responsibility, people are going to be coming for you, people like Thunderbolt Ross, like Val, the Thunderbolts are going to want you, they're going to want to take your powers and use them to their own ends. But at this point early in the series, she's not thinking about any of that, she's like, no, 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 I have this really, really demanding job people respect me for, I'm earning a ton of money doing that, I want to keep doing that. And then continually throughout the series, you just see a bunch of different events happen. Villains like Abomination having to defend him. All these other villains like Daredevil, who is also a lawyer and a superhero by night, forcing her to realize that she does have a responsibility. Like she can be a superhero and have this life as a lawyer too. I mean, really Daredevil is probably the best example of that. Like, oh yeah, you can do both things. Just don't expect to have the normal life that you had before. Like your dating life is going to get a little bit weird. Like you have all these jokes about death by snoo snoo. This character, Arthur here, he's called Arthur in the series. So I'll explain who I think that he is. He might be playing a version of a comic book character from the She-Hulk comics. But they have all these jokes about him just choosing death by smash. Like he just really wants him some of that thick She-Hulk. What'd they die of? Crushed pelvises. Vamputer sentences them to death. <laughs> Bye, Snoo Snoo! Yeah! yeah. Thick with two C's because she's like six foot seven, I believe, during the trailer. If you know Tatiana Maslany in real life, she is tiny. That's kind of the way the powers of the Hulk work. Like, it depends on how tall you were before you got the powers of the Hulk. When you get those gamma abilities, it just proportionately grows you bigger. So, for instance, Thor is way taller than Bruce Banner when they're just like in normal human form. If Thor got the powers of the Hulk, the gamma abilities, he would be a much bigger version of a Hulk than the Bruce Banner Hulk. The other big thing they confirmed during this is what's going on with the Abomination during the course of the series. So Tim Roth has found a way to go back into Tim Roth form, like human form. In the comics, Abomination doesn't have the ability to go back into human form. So that is a little bit of a difference. But what they're doing is they're trying to make it sort of like a dark parallel for what happened with the Bruce Banner Hulk during the MCU movies. So after Incredible Hulk, the last time you saw them fight each other, they obviously recast the Hulk, but through all the Avengers movies, through Thor Ragnarok, all the movies he's been in Avengers Endgame, eventually he slowly became more zen and formed a better balance between his two different personalities so that he can form the Professor Hulk version of his character. Technically, he's supposed to be a little bit weaker, but I think in the MCU they're saying he's just as powerful as he was when he was full Hulk. Like he launches the boulder into outer space, literally. So it seems like they're trying to say that the Abomination has been on the same path in the MCU while he's been locked up this whole time in that special cell. Like he's been trying to become more Zen, but I think part of the idea, because we all expect him to be in the Thunderbolts movie for Val to recruit him, have some kind of cameo scene during She-Hulk where she's like, I'm going to offer you a deal. Time off your sentence if you join my team. Early theory is that he's just pretending to be Zen, peddling this new age mythology that he's trying to sell to everyone just to earn money and find a way to get out of prison. Like he's just pretending to be Zen. During the She-Hulk trailers, Jennifer Walters' boss at her law firm tells her that they're forming a superhero division and her new job now is to defend the Abomination. So she literally has to find a way to free him from prison. Even though he's done all this stuff, it's a bit of a joke on lawyers like, oh yeah, you have to represent this terrible villain character. So it's kind of them clowning on lawyers, saying that like lawyers are just as bad as supervillains because of the things that they do. They have all these scenes where she goes to this self-help group that he's leading, where he's trying to tell them to be all zen. Like, no, 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 we don't get crazy like that. Calm down, everyone. You see all these other superpowered individuals. Some of them look like mutants. I'll explain who some of these characters are because some of them are from the Daredevil comics, which makes sense because there's so much Daredevil happening during the series. 
But like you look in the background, you see this Abomaste sign. That sounds like the new age Zen stuff that he's peddling to everyone, selling to everyone in these classes. And it's just a play on his abomination name. It looks like they have a swear jar in the background here with all these symbols of Buddhism and Eastern religions around it. Like I said, he's peddling all this new age mythology to them. It looks like the special meetings that he's holding here are also happening at this special country club because in the outdoor scenes, you see her in the same dress where they're complimenting her butt. Like, your butt looks so good right now. This will be like one of the horniest Marvel series you've ever seen since the Loki series. Between Loki getting it on with a version of himself and everybody wanting to get it on with a thicker version of She-Hulk, no kink shaming here. You also notice in these outdoor scenes at this country club place, you see a version of Titania's character, and indoor, you also see her at these same meeting scenes. But there's also a lot of behind the scenes where you see holes in the walls and like crazy stuff going on, so it sounds like somebody at the meeting winds up losing it and things get really crazy. You also see a lot of scenes in the courtroom where she goes after She-Hulk and she has to Hulk out and they just go at it. But I believe the Death by Snoo Snoo character here, who they're calling Arthur, might be a version of Arthur Moore, who was in her comics, was in the She-Hulk comics. He was a magic-based villain who used a special talisman to rob banks and do a bunch of other shady stuff. He also got into it with Jennifer Walters in court and tried to get her disbarred by getting her to Hulk out during one of the trials. These two characters that they keep showing in all the trailers seem like versions of Matador and Manbull, who are both from the Daredevil comics, which makes sense, like I said, because Daredevil is such a big part of the series. Matador is just a really skilled fighter, and as the name implies, he's a professional bullfighter on the side. He doesn't have any special powers, though. His real name is Manuel Elganto. Manbull, as the name implies, is a minotaur. He's half man, half bull. His only real superpower, other than the transformation process, is that he has enhanced strength and durability. He was born as a regular human, though, and mutated by a special serum that he was given during experiments. So technically, you think of him as a mutate, but like we're seeing more and more mutants pop up in the MCU, so you could call him a mutant. So in the way that Monica Rambeau's DNA was mutated and that's how she got her powers, you could also think of them as mutants just in general. The comics are really technical about who you can call a mutant and what happens to people like Spider-Man who have biological powers but get them in different ways later in life. Like, Spider-Man is called to mutate because he got his powers from the spider bite that mutated his DNA. And just in general, it seems like during Marvel Phase 4, they're trying to introduce more and more mutant characters in general. Like, during the Miss Marvel series, they literally tell her that she is a mutant, and they play the X-Men the Animated Series theme song, wanting you to think more and more about mutants popping up. I think part of the arc with Abomination during the series is that because Jennifer Walters has to just come to terms with the idea that she has to defend him, even though she knows about their history during the Incredible Hulk movie, like, he tried to kill my cousin, even though it's a joke about the Edward Norton version of Hulk. She eventually does her best to try and be a lawyer like she wants to and defend him, even though he is this terrible person. But he'll probably reveal himself or do something super shady, and she'll find a way with some help from, like, Daredevil, Wong, or even the Bruce Banner version of Hulk to try and get him thrown back in prison. Wherein we'll probably see Val show up and say, okay, well, you're back in prison now. Your only way out is to make a deal with me, and I'll give you time off your sentence. We're putting together a squad. No, it is not called the Suicide Squad, because that would be copyright infringement. Thunderbolts in the MCU is kind of like their version of a Suicide Squad team, where you have a bunch of antiheroes and people from prison, like supervillains, who get time off their sentence or get their sentences commuted by being on the team. If you look at the Marvel Phase 5 schedule, too, they're introducing characters like Agatha Harkness, a bunch of other supervillain characters through the different series. It seems like they're going to slowly fill out that Thunderbolts team with a lot of these different projects, but I think we already have assumptions about some of the characters on the team. Like during Falcon and Winter Soldier, Baron Zemo and John Walker, U.S. Agent, definitely going to be on that team. Probably Yelena Belova's Black Widow, maybe Ghost, obviously Abomination, probably going to be on the team. Maybe Taskmaster, too. We'll see about Taskmaster. And then because we have the Agatha Harkness series, maybe Agatha Harkness is also on a version of the team. There's really no hard and fast rule about how big the team roster has to be. Like, they'll probably have jokes about killing off members that are lesser and then bringing in new members during the movie. Kind of the same way that they did during the Suicide Squad movies. Like in James Gunn's Suicide Squad film, they literally killed off like a whole team at the beginning of that film just to have a joke about how expendable they are. It'll probably be a similar situation during the Thunderbolts movie. But everyone posts all your theories about what's going on with some of these bigger characters. Like, what do you think Abomination is doing during the She-Hulk series? What do you think the Daredevil is going to be doing during the series? I've already explained what's going on with Wong's character during the series and why he's showing up. So I'll add a link for that video at the end of this too. Big reminder, my episodes will start next week. So make sure you have alerts enabled for my channel so you don't miss those. They're also doing a special Disney Plus day next month where they'll be releasing a whole bunch of trailers. It'll be like trailer fest for all the big Marvel Disney Plus series that are coming up. Of course, I'll do videos for all the footage that they wind up releasing. It'll be really cool.
Speaking of brand new stuff, I literally just did a first look video at the new Ironheart series. We just got a teaser. Click here to learn all about that and click here for my other She-Hulk Daredevil trailer video. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next one.